Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and today is Wednesday, May 30th, 2012. And tonight I wanted to go over the uh, investment brokerage sector. I've made a few posts on this in the past few weeks. Uh, actually, going back to the last few months, uh, uh, a very important sector, in my opinion, to keep an eye on, and one that, uh, uh, unfortunately, any way you cut it, just isn't looking good here technically. So let's go ahead and dive into the charts, and I'll try to make this video as quick as possible tonight. Okay, we're looking at the uh, sector here. These are, again, the investment brokered stocks. Uh, these are the companies where you have your money at, Schwab, E-Trade, uh, Interactive Brokers, uh, you name it. Uh, if they're publicly traded, they fall into this category here, this sector. And let's start out here. We're looking at a daily chart, daily time frame. Uh, again, I'm going to try to move quick here, but if you look at the upper left-hand corner uh, as I run through these charts, if I uh, neglect to mention which time frame we're on, uh, you can see that here, daily, two-day, weekly. Those are the frames I'm going to cover today. And this daily chart looks to me, as you can see, we've had this huge slide here recently. Uh, I've talked on that a little bit. seems to be setting up in this bear flag pattern, and uh, as most of you probably know, a bear flag pretty much measures uh, the technical projection. You take the length of the pole, which would be about here. Uh, let's say you want to be more conservative on that and, and put the pole here at this recent slide down. You, you're still talking a break well below this key support level. And again, we're looking at a daily chart, and now we're zooming out two days, so we can go back further in time here. These are the uh, March 2009 lows, and this this line right here is uh, pretty much the last support level, critical support. Uh, if we go back to a weekly chart, now we're going all the way back to 2003. And as you can see, if the sector breaks below this critical support line, uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, you know, I've talked about this a little bit in the past in the in the in the blog. Uh, for those of you who've been trading for a while, uh, or let's say your investors, uh, most of you know that uh, when a stock breaks out to an all-time high or a 52-week high, that's very bullish. And the reason being is you don't have any remorseful uh, holders in the stock at that time. Uh, in other words, if we go out to a 52-week high, everybody on that day that owns a stock is profitable. And so you, you tend to attract new buyers. You don't have a lot of people waiting to get out. And obviously the flip side of that is true on a 52-week low. If a stock breaks down to a 52-week or, in this case, a, a new all-time low uh, especially, uh, Every single person holding that stock, of course, we're not talking about the traders in and out that day, but for the most part, the people that are holding, the vast majority, the shareholders, are uh, very remorseful. They're at, uh, at a loss at that point, and um, it tends to be a very bearish uh, technical event when you break down to an all-time low. So here we are. The sector is, is not there yet, but we are getting close, and we are seeing some very impulsive selling lately, uh, so something to keep an eye on. Now, what I wanted to do was drill down to a few of the uh, independent, uh, sorry, in uh, the individual components. Excuse me. And uh, let's start with some of the names that uh, we all know well. And, and there's a good chance that somebody listening to this uh, right now uh, will have money in, in one or more of these names that, are, that I'm going to talk on here. Uh, this is Morgan Stanley. And we're looking at a daily chart here. Uh, I'm a big fan of the volume at price histogram, and it shows where you know all the trades on this time frame have occurred. And pretty much, as you can see, if we break below this line that I've added here, uh, that it pretty much puts this stock at an all-time low, uh, at least uh, on this frame. Yes, we did have a spike down here in October on that major sell-off, but a very brief spike that shot back up. And as you can see here from the histogram, very few trades occurred at that point. So um, yes, that is a level you might want to watch as well. But personally, in my opinion and from my experience, this support line here is more significant than, than this brief spike low. And we'll look at the two-day period chart going back to 2008. And you can see the only other time other than that quick move down in October, um, we go all the way back to the meltdown in 2008 um, was the last time Morgan Stanley saw prices uh, at this level. And once again, those were very short-lived. That was during the panic sell-off. Uh, so this would be a very bearish uh, technical event for Morgan Stanley to lose that level. Weekly chart, 
shows the same thing. Okay, now let's take a look at CME. Uh, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. This has been a uh, let's let's look at a two-day period chart here. This has been a short trade for a, for a while here on the site. Um, at the top of this channel, we I posted as a short, and again on the second tag here, and I've had it as an active short from that point in time. Continues to be a short, and as you can see, my next target down here is T3. Um, this one isn't really at uh, death's door yet, but it, it's getting there. So if we don't see the sector turn around and firm up soon, uh, we could be in trouble here. So let's take a quick look at the weekly chart on the CME. And as you can see there, there's a little more support below um, on, on that stock. Now let's take a look at Piper Jaffray, another big broker. Uh, this one I believe I have on as an active short trade and as you can see here this was a channel uh, I put it on as a short of the break of this uptrend channel uh, we've had a, quite a bit of a sell-off and uh, like a lot of these financial stocks uh, in, in this sector as well some of the financials I posted on on Friday some of the banks and insurance companies I'm seeing a lot of uh, pretty clean looking the bear flags and bearish pennants and this one does look like that as well and if that were to break down we're looking at uh, you know a projection technical projection that that would put this stock down at new lows and let's just take a quick look two-day chart weekly chart again we're teetering with the getting close we're not there yet on Piper Jaffray but getting close to some new lows Okay, Schwab. I'm pretty certain that a good deal of people that are listening to this have accounts at uh, one or more accounts at Charles Schwab. And as you can see, a very clean looking bear flag pattern, um, which would of course take this down. Here is the uh, critical support line on Charles Schwab. We had a few pierces below that. And I might want to add another line here called this the. Uh, line of last support if you will uh, but if you look at the histogram it gets pretty thin under there these were just a few spikes so we'll call this a, a key resistance zone here on Charles Schwab two-day chart going back a little bit more shows that 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 level was tested there as well and here's a weekly chart very bearish if uh, Charles Schwab gets below that uh, let's call it the 1075 ish area Okay, Cohen Group. Uh, this one we only need to take a look at the weekly chart. Really, this is a uh, uh, stock trading right at recently making an all-time low, and I also have this one on the uh, site as an active short trade. Had it uh, on a break under this level. We push back up above that, that key support level, but not by a whole lot. So I currently still have this on as a short trade idea. Uh, I'll have to update that and determine. I. I can see some pretty solid resistance here but uh, I'll try to get back to everybody on this uh, for anyone who's in that trade and, and list a, an objective stop if I haven't done so already okay let's see here interactive brokers this is my own personal trading account at interactive brokers and I know a, a lot of uh, active or professional traders have accounts here great brokerage company great firm but not a pretty looking chart uh, as you can see here very impulsive selling broke out broke below this uptrend line or this uptrend channel a while back on a big impulsive move down and uh, we're really teeter-tottering on some some key support around this level and uh, all the way down I mean, this would be the, the last stand on that stock two-day chart shows the same thing and a weekly chart anything below that critical support line puts that stock at a new all-time low and uh, that doesn't say uh, or I should say it, it says a lot to me that uh, we're in uh, coming off not just a few months off the highs of a uh, one of the strongest pull markets in, in many years obviously Fed induced uh, and the fact that all these major brokerage companies are, are threatening all-time lows at this point uh, tells me something's rotten in the state of Denmark so let's just keep an eye on these and see if they can turn around here before they break down to new lows 
Okay, Ameritrade, another big brokerage that I'm sure a lot of you have money at. Uh, daily chart here, looks like a clean, very clean uptrend line here, this yellow line which was recently broken. Prices have come back up to retest underneath. Uh, looks like a very objective short anywhere here. Uh, there's a downtrend line if you are short this stock or do want to short this. Uh, I, again, I think the entry is still objective here. Uh, you may want a, a tight stop would be on a break above this sharp downtrend line and a uh, more liberal stop. You might want to see if the stock wants to push up and retest this uptrend line again. Anything above there. Uh, let's see some horizontal support here. So anything above that, much above that 10, uh, 1760 area would, would be a good stop. And moving on. Nomura Holdings, a uh, very big brokerage company. I believe they're located, uh, gosh, I believe it's a Japanese company, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong on that. You can uh, Google any of these and find out a little more information on these if you want. But again, not a not a very pretty looking chart here. Uh, another one, big, big brokerage company threatening, threatening lows. And here is E-Trade. Again, a lot of people's favorite. Uh, E-Trade has a little little room to go on the downside, but if you look at this recent impulsive move down, and again, another very clean looking uh, bear flag pattern uh, with the pole being right here. Uh, so again, if you were to see this bear flag pattern break out, break down, I should say, you know, the technical measurement on there, you would add the length of the pole to the breakdown area, and, and that would put uh, E-Trade somewhere around there, the 650 area, and a, course, a course which would put it at, uh, uh, it, at new 52-week or multi-year lows, I should say, and this is the spike lows down in the uh, 2000, into the 2009, March 2009 lows, and anything below that is uh, really no support underneath for the stock but again I, I put more emphasis on this support line here these were just temporary spike lows caused during the panic sell-off and uh, if it breaks under this this horizontal line uh, that's where I would really be concerned uh, if I had money with E-Trade. Okay, I'm almost finished here. I'll just run through a few more that are in the sector. Uh, these aren't uh, as big of names, but uh, again, stocks worth noting. PNSN. PNSN was actually, some of you might remember, this was a very successful long. I think we took this one up for a 50% gain uh, to the third target back here. Took it on a break out of this downtrend line, and um, it hit my third target almost to the penny went a little bit above it and as you can see and this is why I always say I you know I list final targets some of the stocks keep going past there but uh, I personally wouldn't keep money in in uh, any of these trades after the the final target is hit I just don't think the risk reward is worth it and as you can see on PNSN uh, the bottom pretty much fell out of that stock after it hit that third target and continues to fall when you see a stock get down under the one dollar range even under the you know two three dollar range, it's uh, more often than not sooner or later that stock is heading to a, a bankruptcy court, and uh, this stock at twenty five cents probably doesn't have a chance. But we'll see. Okay, let's look at a couple more MKTX. This is actually an active trade on the site right now. Uh, it was a, a short on the break of this multi year uptrend line here. This is a two day chart we're looking at. Um, and when I look at this two-day chart and I pay attention to this volume at price histogram, I could almost draw a downtrend line, if you will, look on the end of these red bars. You have the bulk of the volume. Most of the shares traded have been above this line, which is just here uh, in the last year or so. So if this stock, let's see, if this trade plays out, we're, we're sort of flagging here a little bit of a pennant. If we break down from that, yeah, this is uh, would be my first target on the trade, if I'm not mistaken. I'll have to revisit my static charts, but uh, on a daily chart, if we break below that line, um, you're going to see, again, zooming back out to the two-day chart, the vast majority of traders, people who own this stock right now, have bought in 
above there. So what you have are a ton of trapped longs, if you will, very remorseful buyers. And as you can see, the, these bars are just, they continue to thin out below. So this is one that could really build up momentum on the downside if, if we do break below this level. And here's a weekly chart. And this is, I believe, the uh, one of the charts I posted when I put this trade up. Uh, that's my weekly target on the trade, uh, the 2020 area. LPLA, I believe this one was posted in one of the uh, recent video trade idea, um, the trade idea videos, I should say. And as you can see, we broke down. I cannot recall, and uh, forgive me for this, I can't recall if it was posted as a trade idea on the break of this trend line or this one here. I have two uptrend lines. Uh, either way, that, that stock, uh, that trade did hit that first target, went below it, and has pushed back up. And I believe that offers an objective short entry right here, um, anywhere around these current levels. Uh, if you look over here at the price at volume histogram, you see just a ton of supply above this line. Uh, a lot of trades that happened over here and very little uh, below that line. So again, this one could be a short here yeah, with a, a stop not too far above that line. This is a two-day chart showing pretty much the same thing and a weekly chart. And we don't have too much history on the weekly chart, so disregard that. Okay, a couple more in the sector. JMP, here's a weekly chart looking at a, a critical support level right here. Anything below there would probably usher in a lot of selling and we're sitting right right on that line now. Uh, again, we're looking at a weekly chart here. AMPL, uh, this one, you can see that downtrend line. Let's take a look at a two-day chart, daily chart. Uh, 18 cents. Uh, not sure how big that company is, but again, it's probably not going to ever see the uh, its old highs ever again, in my opinion. Uh, let's see. GFIC. Oops, that's not it. There it is. GFIG weekly chart. Not a whole lot of support below this level. And finally, LTS. As you can see, a nice, clearly well-defined uptrend line on the weekly chart here. Take a look at the two-day chart. You have a downtrend channel. Um, not really advising to short this one, uh, but if you did, you'd want to keep an eye on that downtrend channel as a break above could be could be bullish. Here it is on the daily chart. So again, pretty pretty clear downtrend channel. So again, folks, take a, keep an eye on these stocks and. Um, uh, you want to see those stocks uh, find support here soon and, and not break below those key support levels because um, that would be a very, very bearish technical sign.